Hello, fellow noodlers. I'm Joy Alford Brand, one of the hosts of Everyday Macaroni. And if you don't know what that is, then you can go check out our Hello YouTube video <laughs> to learn more about us. But we are a podcast and you may be wondering what we're doing here on YouTube. I'm going to explain a little bit more of that in a moment. But for now, let me just please ask you to subscribe to our channel and like this video and hit the bell notification button so you can be notified when we post new videos or an episode of Everyday Macaroni, the podcast. Now, the reason we're on YouTube and we are doing videos is because <laughs> seeing is believing. <laughs> There's so much material that we have and we want to share not just the actual podcast episodes and Monday night dinner recordings, but also pictures and videos that we've taken over the years because you just, you got to see it to believe it. You really do. So today's video is all about our chocolate cake episode that we just posted. You may be wondering why we are posting a video about it when we have already posted a podcast episode about it. And I'll say again, seeing is believing. We have some great pictures. And since Everyday Macaroni is mostly about our Monday night family dinners, I've been snapping pics of stuff that we've been eating <laughs> over the years. And I want to share some of those pics with you. And if you have been listening to our podcast episodes and you're following our channel and our story, then you understand how important the food is to this whole story. And particularly if you've watched the vegetable pie video, you kind of already have an idea of what's going on. And the desserts play a really big role in our Monday night family dinners for a couple of different reasons. And again, seeing is believing. So we want to share some of these pics with you. <laughs> Ah, uh, there's something. So, of course, the story of the chocolate cake screams out for some pics and a quick little video, which is what I'm doing right now. But if you want to listen to the whole story, then please check out that podcast episode. You can listen to it here on YouTube, or you can check it out on Podbean, Spotify, iTunes, or Google Podcasts, or even Amazon, if you just want to listen to it and see what's behind the story and what accompanies the pics in this video. But for now, I've just got to show you some of these pics because it really does bring the story to life. <laughs> Without further ado, here are some pictures of the soccer tort we talked about, which is the chocolate cake, starting in October of last year. All right, so first up, here is Al's version of the soccer tort from November of last year. He made it with a box cake mix, which you'll hear all about that in the podcast episode. He also used apricot fruit preserves and sugar-free chocolate, both inside and on the top of the cake, which you can see kind of spilling off the side of it there. <laughs> now, why is this funny? Okay, the reason it's funny is because Al subscribes to the guinea pig theory of cooking. And this means that he believes that he can A, make it better than the recipe he found about that particular dish. B, <laughs> use up some stuff that is either about to go bad or that he just has too much of. Or C, he wants to make some kind of a dessert or treat or something that he's seen on either The View, one of <laughs> Rick Steves Europe episodes, or some Spanish cooking show, and he's just gonna go for it, take a crack at it. He looks at all of us as guinea pigs. I'm gonna leave it up to your imagination as to the outcome of all these experiments, but <laughs> you throw the sugar-free chocolate on top of that and yeah, let's just say I'm not a picky eater. <laughs> Number two, here is the soccer tort that I made last Christmas for Juliet. Now I took a series of pictures documenting the steps I took to make the cake First, here's the batter in the pan. Second, here's the cake with the parchment paper under it. I've poured the chocolate over the top. This is what she's talking about, the chocolate pooling up on the parchment paper, which I'm sure you can tell what that is. <laughs> and third, here is a picture of the finished cake on the cake stand. Now, not for nothing, but out of the three soccer torts we've tried in the last nine months or so, this one is the best. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone knows I'm not the world's best cook and I'm not gonna lie. It was a little chewy. However, 
in terms of flavor and not being too dry, you know, it was the best tasting one. Not the best looking one maybe, but yeah, I may be a little biased here, but I think it was the best one. Finally, here's a picture of the number three soccer tort that we've tried in the preceding nine months. <laughs> and Al bought it at a local supermarket. And so it was a store-bought dessert. And out of the three, it does look the best. <laughs> However, this is the one that was bone dry. And yeah, I can attest to that. I did try a little bit of it. It was very, very dry. However, it being a full sugar store-bought dessert, it had pride of place <laughs> on the Monday Night Family dinner table. And we are serious about our desserts, no joke. So even though it was bone dry, because it was store-bought and it was full sugar, someone else made it, it was no holds barred. That cake did not make it out alive. Juliet took the rest of it home and it got gone pretty quickly. So we're very serious about our desserts. Even a dry store-bought dessert is better than something, some concoction one of us whipped up. Trust me. <laughs> so yeah, get it while you can. <laughs> now to hear the rest of the chocolate cake story, including what a soccer tort is, you're going to have to check out the podcast episode we just posted about it. And again, you can find that on any of the platforms I just mentioned. You can also find us on Facebook or Instagram by searching Everyday Macaroni. Yay! And you can purchase macaroni merch on our website, everydaymacaroni.com. Now, if you have a fun family story that you would like to share with us, you can either email us at info at everydaymacaroni.com or you can now call us on our phone number 919-723-2043 and just leave a little message for us and you could end up on a future episode of Everyday Macaroni and how fun would that be? We all know, super fun. So thanks for supporting us. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And just remember, every day it's macaroni. macaroni.